Assalamu alaikum. alaykum. My name is Sabahat and the topic of my presentation is intractable headache. Before going towards the case study that I have to present, let's get to know something about the intractable headache. What is intractable headache? Intractable headache is also known as status migraine or status migrainosis. It is a very severe type of headache that continues for more than 72 hours and it has been unresponsive to the standard therapy that is usually given for the headaches or migraines. It could be a combination of two or more than two types of headaches. It could be a migraine type, it could be a tension type headache, it could be a cluster type headache, it could be anything. So we know the headaches are of two types, primary headaches and secondary headaches. Primary headaches are those which do not occur due to any, any medical condition or due to any underlying conditions. So mostly intractable headaches turns out to be primary headaches. Secondary headaches are those which occur due to some underlying condition, but it can be easily diagnosed by different lab tests and examination. Um, but there is a one case that may lead to wrong therapy or diagnosis is that there are certain chronic or daily uh, type of headaches that may mimic like migraine or tension type. Uh, so due to wrong therapy or wrong diagnosis or wrong treatment, the headache become intractable. Uh, there are certain symptoms uh, of the intractable headache, which is quite similar to the regular ones. But the difference is in their severity and duration because intractable headaches are associated with the severe type of symptoms. And these symptoms include throbbing pain, nausea, vomiting, sensitivity to lights and sounds and dizziness. Also, there are some risk factors that may trigger the headache and these uh, Triggering factors should be considered during the diagnosis and therapy of the headaches. And it could very helpful, it could be very helpful in the treatment. And these factors include hormone imbalances, stress, overuse of medicines, changes in weather, lack of sleep, dehydration, etc. So now let's uh, make uh, intractable migraine easy to understand by making it uh, or by comparing it with the regular migraine. A regular migraine is a migraine that lasts between 4 to 72 hours but it doesn't exceed 72 hours. Um, it can easily be relieved by uh, the treatment like tripton drugs but in contrast to status migraine, status migraine exceeds more than 72 hours and it cannot be relieved even after giving the treatment. A regular standard treatment that is given for the regular migraine because it keeps coming back. Now let's move towards the heart of my presentation that is a case study and which states that a patient came to a clinic with a complaint of severe headache and nausea. She took an oral medication to resolve the pain, but it keep getting worse, which was also affecting her work. She had some medical history on the basis of which she had been given a treatment. So let's see what she has been diagnosed with. The patient's age is 29 years old. Her gender is female. Uh, her chief complaint is she's suffering from severe headache and severe vomiting. Her family history shows that her mother and grandmother was affected by migraine. Um, uh, looking towards its medical history, it has been shown that she had been previously diagnosed with migraine with aura that was also associated with nausea, vomiting and photophobia. She had previously taken the following drug as treatments like OTC analgesics for headache and contraceptives, which was discontinued later on because these contraceptives are have their own adverse effects. Now currently what she's taking, she's taking sumatriptan uh, 100 mg per oral, but it seems like 
that is not working well because her migraine or her headache is getting severe now uh, her medical her physical and neurological examinations have been taken and which shows that all her phys she is physically and neurologically well and all her tests came within the normal limits uh, so on the basis of previous history and medication and also on the response of her current medication we are leading towards a diagnosis of intractable migraine as we know that the patient is not responding to the oral sumatriptan and she vomited it out as soon as she took it um and so it le it is um directing us to uh, directing us towards the intervention that she needs some interventions so um we are moving towards the treatment that we could give her since she is uh, suffering from vomiting as well we could to treat her we have to give her antiemetics or dopamine receptor blockers uh, our first choice of treatment of this drug is prochlorperazine we could give it 10 mg iv or im this can be repeated every 6 hour usually prochlorperazine is very effective and enough to treat vomiting but if it if it getting worse if the vomiting persists then we could also give other antiemetics just such as metoclopramide 10 mg iv chlorpromazine 0.1 mg per kg uh now to treat the mic uh, to the treat the headache we give 5 ht receptor agonist that is sumatriptan but we will give it subcutaneously 6 mg because oral is not working and she has vomited it out when she took it so if the headache persists we could we could give a second injection but after one hour and the dose should not exceed to 12 mg per day now um, as an alternative treatment of intractable migraine if the patient is in an emergency uh, department and if the metoclopramide is not working as a monotherapy we could give a combination of dihydroagatamine and metoclopramide um the patient who is also the patient who is already uh, treated in emergency de uh, department and has been taking a standard therapy uh, an adjunctive treatment with dexamethasone can also be given to reduce the risk of reoccurrence of headache now there are certain precautions which we should keep in mind um and we should tell the patient about these precautions that is parenteral dihydroagatamine 45 should not be used as monotherapy as it is contraindicating in patients with vascular disease uh, or peripheral circulations similarly if we are taking sumatriptan that it should uh, we should make sure that it should be administered after the 24 hours of ergot alkaloids because it has a potential for prolonged vasospastic reaction also uh, the antimetic drugs prochlorperazine or metoclopramide it may cause extra pyramidal side effects so to reduce it we may use diphenhydramine so these are the treatment or precautions that we must take um that's all i hope you like my presentation thank you allah hafiz